Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and uh, I'd say coming right on the heels of the M19 leak, but actually, technically, they posted this before this, but this week and last week, they are just really hitting them out of the park when it comes to shooting themselves in the foot. And I'm officially calling whatever I just described shotgun baseball and inventing it and trademarking it, so don't even think about it. So Chris Kiritz, whoever that is, and I mean that very sincerely, there is no little bio link under his name in this article, so I, I have no way of knowing who this is. So some guy or woman or since it's wizards somebody who thinks they're in between um named chris uh felt the need to remind us all that uh well let's just say it was titled magic online conduct update oh are they gonna fix their own conduct in the way that they moderate it <laughs> no they're gonna fix your conduct just say they're not gonna fix anything they're gonna steal your cards Oh, let's put the legal disclaimer right now. According to the terms of service, it's not stealing because they own everything. You own nothing. You do not own the cards in any way. All property, all data on the server is the property of Wizards of the Coast and blah, 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 terms of service crap. That said, for simplicity and to match with people's opinions and the common thought of how this works, um, I'm just going to keep using words like stealing and confiscate, but I don't mean them from a legal or literal standpoint. All right, let's read this disaster. And I should say, I am kind of on both sides of this. There are points to be made on both sides, but just overall, the implications are awful. So, as part of Wizards of the Coast's dedication to creating safe and accommodating, oh god, there's that word again, places to play magic, magic online takes violations of Wizards' code of conduct seriously. Let me just add, they really don't put in a lot of effort if you're disabled in any way, unless they're gonna parade it around like some media spectacle thing. When it comes to, like, the activism of their staff, that is super not their thing. Like, the, if you're in a wheelchair or something, they'll, like, make sure the place has ramps. But that's pretty much the extent of the accommodations that they're talking about. What they really mean is, oh, we're going to shield you from people who disagree with your opinions if you're a left-leaning psychopath. Also, accommodating? <laughs> not if you're in certain gender groups, skin color groups, religious groups. Oh, no, hell no. Get the hell out of our game is, is their accommodation policy. That said, we know the actions of a few individuals can disrupt that environment, and as an online game, we know the promise of anonymity can, er, I said that really weird, but whatever, let's go with it, can further enable harassment and bullying. Yeah, I don't use MTGO, so there's probably going to be some mistakes in this uh, video, just assumptions or something, some wrong details about it, but I would just take a wild guess you can't cloak your username, and you know, people probably don't register 10 usernames, you know, because then they'd have to, like, buy the cards ten times? I'm pretty sure if you're you, then you're you for, like, ten years on MTGO, so it's not that anonymous. In fact, I would bet that they don't even have dedicated servers. It's probably peer-to-peer -peer, uh, traffic to save money, and uh, you could probably just get the person's IP address and then very shortly after get their home address. So, probably not very anonymous. Anyway, historically, we've had a multi-tiered escalation process built on the theory that anyone could have a bad day and make a mistake. Yeah, the mistake was when you guys made lands part of the deck, okay? So yeah, anybody can have a bad day. I mean, I've personally heard the most calm and civil, reasonable people and like super nice people just rage out at FNM because they just cannot pull a land for like three rounds in a row. We're talking like nine games straight. If you don't get a little bit irked when the game just kicks you square in the nuts, unabated to any decision that or any control you had over the game, then you are dead inside. This is an odd way to phrase this next sentence, but uh, I think they're missing a comma, honestly. These layers were based on both on the severity of the report... And then in parentheses, a simple swear is weighted differently than more targeted harassment, as well as the previous conduct of the player. Another parentheses, a first offense versus a third offense, and were designed to prevent players from getting excessively punished for minor infractions. I think there should have been about five commas in that, actually. Anyway, I don't read their articles for their readability, but I did used to be an editor. Unfortunately, a side effect of a more lenient policy is that chronically disruptive or toxic players may end up on the platform longer than we'd like. Interesting way to phrase that. Also inaccurate because they said like first versus third offense. So not really chronically, like as in they do it over and over and over. And then you're saying that the tiered response doesn't work. That's literally what a tiered response is. This whole thing doesn't make sense at all. They're, this whole article is a blanket statement so that they can get people that, you know, they can thought police and that they disagree with based on what you said and enforce the rules unevenly. So spoiler alert, that's what this whole thing's about. Let's get back to it. With that in mind, starting May 7th, 2018, we're updating the Magic Online conduct process. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Best update to Magic the Gathering Online ever. Let me guess, okay, 
you made it so that people will get a one day ban if they assemble and attempt to play with um some like something with 30 or more counter spells we'll say i could name three different decks at this point those three how about that how about we start banning people for that because you want to see people rage out in the chat oh there's one of the reasons people artificially time stalling and not doing infinite loops properly and just trying to like angle shoot with the clock and crap and then somebody rages at them in the chat and they're the one with the problem really gee i'm so glad that they're changing this come on this is why i don't use mtgo i mean i've seen like one or two games played on it so i have a basic idea of how it works but um I'm just comparing this to Axe Mage, basically, which is completely unmoderated the vast majority of the time. Thank God the slash ignore function actually does something now. The, the game always had the function, it just didn't do anything. Now it does something. Yeah. The conduct actions available to our support staff aren't changing uh, and include issuing a warning, muting a player uh, for a few minutes up to permanently, or account suspension for a day up to permanently. Both of which I think should have had a comma, but I think I'll stop mentioning that because you guys get all triggered. In fact, it should have been a semicolon instead of a per Okay, fine. We are, however, reducing the tolerance thresholds for these conduct paths for both initial and repeated behaviors. Wow, that's the way to not piss off your customers and drive them off the platform. Make it more severe for an initial infraction. Yeah. You know, I think I've been banned like six or seven times from uh, MechWarrior Online. 100% of the times it was because my teammates were like, you know, shooting me. I didn't have nothing nice to say about that. And they were just like, oh, no, four hour ban. Guess what? I got tired of it. All the bullshit and all the idiot teammates and I quit the game. That's what everybody's going to do if you keep giving them like a one week mute because their opponent was being a jackass. Now, the other problem with this is, okay, who spends the most money on MTGO? Instead of just, I'm going to play casually 20 bucks, whatever. I'll just build a fun deck and play and whatever. Maybe I'll win some tournaments. Maybe I won't. I just enjoy playing magic for the fun of it. And, you know, dynamic games and whatever. I don't have to win, but, you know, just whatever. Yeah, that person, like I said, spends about 20 bucks. The person who spends like $800 is like an immature, just it, to drop $800 in MTGO. And I know people who have dropped, you know, five figures, okay? They're insecure, immature, just socially inept. Just that's the type of person who would receive these bans because they're always the ones raging. Oh, you're not playing your deck correctly. And if you would have played your deck correctly, I would have won. You just won because of sheer dumb luck, blah, 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 blah. We've heard it all. I've heard it at my old LGS. I've heard it in X-Mage. I've seen uh, just cringe compilations on MTGO or on YouTube, I should say, of MTGO. Those are the people who are going to get like these uh, like easier, quicker lifetime bans. Oh boy, is Wizards going to get sued because, okay, let's be honest. You can put whatever the hell you want in your terms of service. They own the cards, okay? I don't give a shit what your terms say. People bought them. It is heavily implied that they own the cards. I think it even, like, says your inventory. Like, as in, it's yours. It, it really, all the disclaimers in the world are not going to say that, that people don't own these cards. I mean, like, entire countries in Europe just said that, um, in games where you can open a loot box, get an item, and the item has an equivalent real-world value and can be traded to others, that is gambling because that is a real item. Whether you own it or not, you can redeem it for money. And guess what? In MTGO, you can redeem cards for money. So at least, bare minimum in three to four European countries, you own those cards. Take it to court, you'll win. So you're in Taco Bell and you decide to just unleash a, a string of profanity because something pissed you off. They can kick you out, but they can't grab the property that you already bought from them. That's a legal seizure and you handing them money and then them giving you a receipt and your food equals that's your property. They could put a big old poster on the wall that says if we kick you out for conduct violations, you owe us your tacos back and it doesn't matter because that's not the law. And remember, corporations don't make laws. So I think in America, you could probably get it to stick that you own those cards. Here, you want to sue them? Here's some case precedent. Uh, they banned somebody a long time ago and they compensated them somehow, I do believe with a check in the mail is the rumor, uh, for their cards. And they told them to hush, hush, keep it on the down low. But hello, they banned them. You think they're going to keep it on the down low? No, everybody knows about this. Everybody knows that word got out that they were compensated for their card collection after the ban because they did not want the person going around saying, hey, I wasn't compensated. I just lost $3,000 worth of cards and so can you at any point at wizard's discretion if they decide they don't like you for some bullshit reason for something you did completely out of MTGO, which I believe is what happened. I think this person cheated at a GP or Pro Tour or something and then they suspended their MTGO account. 
God, is that lawsuit worthy? Terms of use that, that apply to actions in the real world at a separate event? What? That's like Wizards trying to suspend DCI memberships for shit that you said on Facebook that's unrelated to anything anywhere at any LGS, any FM, or any tournament, which they are currently doing, by the way. So this whole article says we're going to drop the ban hammer uh, even more and we're going to, it's way easier and way quicker. We're going to fast track permanently banning people. In other words, seizing your card collection because you are now disconnected from them. No warning, nothing. Just somebody reported you, boom, you're banned. No, oh, you're about to get banned. Oh, there was an investigation. Sell off your cards real quick. Which, by the way, I got to say Jeremy's situation. He didn't have to go to court to prove that he owns the cards, which sucks because that would be the best precedent ever ever because you know they could offer him triple triple the amount that he's ever put in mtgo and triple the amount of his current card collection to settle and he would still not settle because the precedent of actually the users do own the property because you sold it to them and everything implies that except for one little line in the terms that little legal precedent would just erupt into a carpet bombing of lawsuits against them that would sink their entire company. Like if there was a glitch and they accidentally deleted some of your cards, ooh, class action lawsuit, instantly. Let's just call it a class action settlement. It wouldn't even be a lawsuit. The case, the case law and the precedent would be right there. So anyway, that's the big part about this is card ownership and them claiming they own them and me claiming that at least in some countries and possibly the U.S., you own those cards. Trust me, I don't give a shit what Wizard says. You own those cards. They're tradable, they have a cash value, and you can cash them out at any time with a third-party bot that they claim they block, but they don't, which is implied consent, and that's more copyright law, but just trust me, you'd win in court, okay? But that's all I'm going to say about this legal bullshit. But what I will say is that'll be the consequences of lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, but in Jeremy's case, to finish that little story, he just got a chargeback. Real simple. He sold off his cards ahead of time, and then for pending, like, recent credit card transactions, he just said, um... I paid them and they didn't deliver anything. They, they they deleted my account. They did not give me what I purchased. Boom, charge back. And uh, yeah, they sided with him and he got his money back. But not the way I wanted him to. I wanted him to sue to say he owns the cards. But uh, the next person will. Next person to get banned who has a thousand bucks in cards or ten thousand bucks in cards. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, the cost of a lawyer is looking pretty good at that point, isn't it? Anyway, let's read the rest of this horseshit. Uh, let's see. Um, generally, this means that actions taken against accounts in response to conduct issues will be more severe up front, most noticeably in the cases of repeat offenders and threatening behaviors. Let me translate that, okay? They just said it's anonymous, right? So nobody can find anybody's home address. Yeah, that's super impossible. It's never happened ever. I've never heard stories of that. Mm -mm, definitely not. If somebody says, play one more counter spell and I'm literally going to kill you. Oh my God. Oh, threatening. Thre no, what they mean by threatening is um, they disagree with you identifying as the gender that you factually and scientifically are not oh that's threatening that's threatening i mean it's it's literally just stating an opinion like it's it's stating a differing opinion in a non-offensive way but oh i think we know what type of staff members wizards hires for every position ever hyper liberal nut jobs in fact does this not sound big brother and just like hitlerish to you uh, our goal is to ensure that disruptive players, in other words, people they don't agree with, with unpopular opinions, are removed from Magic Online as quickly as possible. So remove, not just, oh, we're, we're stepping up the ban, we might give, you know, instead of a one hour mute, we might give a one week mute up front, you know, just to really send that message. Big chilling effect, hopefully it'll stop the behavior. No, they don't, they just said they don't give a shit about stopping the behavior. They said our goal is to ensure that disruptive players are removed. As in, your account deleted, your cards seized, you lose all the money from your property, they stole what is likely your property that you could prove in court, and you're now removed. Okay, so th that's what they're saying right after they said, oh, tears and, and upfront, blah, they're just covering for, we want you gone. We're, we're gonna, we want to purge people that are conservative or right-leaning or anything else from the platform. I'm sure they're also including just like chronic rager 12 year old douchebags who people wish would be like booted off of Xbox Live and Call of Duty. Obviously, nobody wants them around either, duh. But let's read between the lines and look at the company's history. They said they don't want to hire white males, they don't want white males in the judge program. They don't want white males playing the game. They want a bunch of, you know, affirmative action token people from every group so that they could feel better about themselves instead of just whoever wants to play the game. And if, if you're a white male and you have no problem with anybody of any gender, color, background, age, anything showing up to play FNM with you because who cares? Too bad you're still part of the problem and you gotta go. Sorry. Just your gender, the color of your skin, and the fact that you exist and attend FNM is a problem because you're upping the number of white people. So, sorry. Too many males, too many white folks. 
You're not welcome because you're making us look bad. You're making us feel bad about yourself. We, we don't care if you want to play magic or not. So with a wonderful quality history like that, I think we can project that maybe they just want, you know, maybe not white males gone from MTGO because, I mean, unless they're going to turn out a webcam, who cares? Like, how would they even know? How is that even relevant? But boy, do they want anti-left people gone. This is not about language. This is not about threats. This is not about disruptive behavior. This is about we want certain people out of our community and by certain people they mean and then they have a whole list and I think we all know damn well what's on it. I honestly don't care if it's the FTC, the FCC, the fucking FDA or KFC that shuts them down. They're eventually going to get in trouble for this behavior. Their hiring practices are illegal. Their discrimination of their customers is illegal. It's illegal in at least some of the 50 states and countries that they uh, operate in. I cannot wait for enough people to file complaints with the federal government in America that they just get the hammer dropped on them. It's happened before to tons of companies. I could give examples, but look it up on the internet if you're interested. You can't go this far off the, the left nut job cliff and not have there be consequences. They're going to hit the ground eventually. So anyway, stop with the threatening behaviors, everyone. Otherwise, the thought police are watching and they've got, you know, 18-inch batons instead of 12-inch now. They, they gave them the ability to hit you even harder. I gotta read this part again. Our goal is to ensure that disruptive players are removed from Magic Online as quickly as possible and minimize the impact they have on the rest of the community. Yep, we all know what that means. Part of adjusting our tolerance thresholds. <laughs> Funny that they would use that phrase is introducing a zero tolerance policy on threatening conduct, which will be met with immediate Magic Online account suspension. So zero tolerance, first offense, and they are just using the vague term of uh, threatening conduct. I seriously doubt that they mean threatening to kill your opponent. What are you going to do, threaten to report them for like cheating at the game, stalling, using known glitches, just uh, all the shit that people get heated about in the chat? Like that kind of threatening, because that kind of threatening is perfectly legitimate. You should not have a zero tolerance policy on it. In fact, you should suspect it. And if somebody's reported for it, look at what the other person was doing in the gameplay and ban them. Anyway, immediate account suspension as well as uh, possible removal from organized play and the Wizards Play Network and, where appropriate, escalation to law enforcement for investigation. Uh, I got news for you, little snowflake that wrote this, Chris. Law enforcement are going to laugh in your fucking face if you report to them that somebody said mean words on the internet, including but not limited to, there are only two genders. Somebody typing, you're cheating, your account should be banned, is not a criminal offense. I don't like the deck you're playing, you're a terrible person, can you switch to a better deck, is not something the FBI tends to look into, okay? Okay, maybe I should give some more real examples, like realistic stuff that's probably going to happen the next month because of this bullshit, okay? I voted for Trump and I support his policies. Boom! Oh, get the police on him. Oh my God, you're going to be removed from organized play. You're going to be banned from the WPN. You're, where appropriate, you're going to have this escalated law enforcement because how dare you say something positive about Trump on our platform and our community. That's threatening. You could probably literally type the phrase I'm white into the chat. Boom! Instaban. I mean, who the hell knows how far they're going to go with this? They have no guidelines. They don't have a point system. They're being as vague as possible and the reason reason for that is because they want you gone if you're a conservative. Fuck you, wizards. This is the last straw and you are going to get sued to oblivion. So in the future, if you are banned and you have the chat logs, you have whatever evidence they send you, if they even fucking bother, send it to me. Uh, I don't know. Probably, I never checked Twitter. Where the hell could you send it? You could just probably reply to any of my posts in the community tab or just send me a message on YouTube. I check those occasionally and I will look into it, make a video about it and give you some probably legal advice and then popularize your lawsuit and help raise funds for it because anything I can do to crush wizards at this point, I will do it. Until Hasbro steps in and guts their company of all the problem people so they can cut this left-leaning, I'm going to change the whole world and SJW above profits bullshit, uh, I'm going to do everything I can to drag the name through the mud and destroy their company, destroy the product, and destroy everyone who works there. So, oh well. By the way, within the law, like just like socially, morally, pressure, you know, bad press. Nothing illegal, obviously. I'm not that stupid. Here's the fun part. You ready for this? They already acknowledge with this next part that they're going to make mistakes and that their crazy, you know, purple-haired moderator, angry, you know, feminist lesbians are going to, like, hand out some little 
exaggerated punishments, if a player has had action taken on their account that they feel is unwarranted, they can appeal the result. By the way, you're probably appealing to the same goddamn person who just looked at the case in the first place, so don't expect that to go anywhere. Instead of appealing it, I would just sue them for the value of the cards for harassment for discrimination and pretty much everything else. In fact, if you're not married to your MTG account, let's just basically try to entrap them because it actually in a civil suit it is legal to entrap somebody because I'm not law enforcement and neither are you. Go say the most, like inflammatory but not threatening conservative things <laughs> in the chat and see if it gets you banned and if it does let's sue the living shit out of them just like oh i, I see you played negate and countered my cell spell that that reminds me of uh, did you hear about you know trump's immigration law i actually support that i just heard about that today or i'm i'm watching cnn did, oh did you hear about this that trump just did i support it completely like perfectly reasonable statements like they could be inflammatory but if they are it's the other person with the problem who can't be civil about it they just cannot tolerate other people's viewpoints or just be like hey i just brought out two tokens which reminds me there's only two genders if you get banned for that you will win a million dollars in court i can virtually guarantee that that is just straight up discriminating against um the popular and factual scientific and medical opinion and your political and moral leanings and religious every i mean you could you could file three lawsuits and win all three of them Anyway, um, the process can be found below and appeals will be escalated to our most senior support representatives for review. In other words, actual Wizards of the Coast employees instead of contractors. Yeah, that's who I think will be fair and balanced. That's who I want reviewing my account. Some level-headed, psychotic, trans, like, double-reverse lesbian something, dual gender, whatever the fuck they all think they are over there. Yeah, that'll be a fair and balanced review. Definitely. Due to the investigative nature of the process, we cannot commit to a firm turnaround time. Yeah, what they do is they just leave it for a week and then say, nah, that guy's a conservative, fuck it. Uh, but we'll strive to be as quick as possible in cases of account suspension. Yeah, that's good because the second you get your account on ban, you're going to sell off all your cards and quit and go play, uh, well, probably not Arena, probably MTGO. But by the way, if you sign up for Arena, I assume they want your DCI number. Make a new one. Do not use the one that's associated with FNM or that you've been using for the last couple of years. Obviously, there is no benefit, none whatsoever, to using your real name or your real DCI number on Arena. If you go to some premium event like a pre-release and they hand you a code card, guess what? It ain't specific to your DCI number. They don't have the technology to do that. There's a damn good reason that I have three DCI numbers, okay? And I'm going to use a fourth one for Arena if I ever sign up. Beyond updating our policies, we're looking at making some small changes to Magic Online to provide tools to help players manage their experience, including allowing you to opt out of in-game chat altogether. That's actually a decent idea. Because um, you can mute people already, from what I've seen, but uh, just saying, I just don't even want to chat. Who cares? Like, okay, I mean, there's a lot of Nintendo games like that. It does work. I mean, you don't need to chat. I mean, if you want to ask a question about why something resolved a certain way, okay, whatever, but, you know, you should know. Anyway, um, ideally, we'd like an in-client reporting system. Is there not? Is there actually not? You can't right-click on somebody's name and report them. Holy shit, that's news to me. Like, they've had that in games going back to, like, 1998. Like, are you kidding me that they couldn't implement that? <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, but we still face some technical hurdles we'll need to address before we can make that a reality. Uh, one of my college degrees is in software design and, uh, and programming, so uh, I could speak to this. It's because their team's a bunch of incompetent morons. That's the technical hurdle. That is literally the only technical hurdle. There, there's You don't need to redesign the whole damn like internet to right-click on somebody's name and file a report. Okay, It just does a, a notification to entry in a database. I could write it. I mean, what's the technical hurdle when every other game I've ever played has a report function built right into the game? The technical hurdle is that their programmers have proven to be complete idiots. So let's read the rest of this. What should you report? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I think we all know what, what they really want you to report. Um, what gets reported is up to each individual player. See, there you go. There you go. There you go. There it is in black and white. What gets reported is up to each individual player. So if you identify as a four gendered, whatever the hell, whatever, and somebody says, I don't really agree with that. So I'm just going to use the pronoun that I feel comfortable with. That's more based in, in fact and science than what you think you are. Because like my friend's anorexic and when she looks in a mirror, she sees a fat person, but that doesn't mean that she is factually fat. It just means that she has a psychological disorder that makes her see herself that way. She is incorrect and her view is not backed up by any kind of science or fact or anything. So that's just my opinion. So I don't call her fat. I call her skinny and keep reminding her of that, even if it hurts her feelings. So I'm just going to call 
you her, even though you think you're a he? Oh my God, report it. Like that was, that was the most polite harassment and threat I've ever heard in my life, but I'm going to hit that report button. I'd even say that that's downright respectful and well-explained and well-intentioned for God's sake. Nope, hit that report button. You know it's going to freaking SJW Central and they're going to be like, oh, how dare he? That is literally equivalent to rape and he, he basically threatened to kill you, okay? You're lucky to be alive and I'm deleting his MTGO account immediately. Please make your way to a safe space with a therapist who has no degree whatsoever and uses crystals. Get your quantum energy field aligned because after that kind of attack, I think you're more of a blue energy and you need to get back to green, hon. God, that's twice as funny because I could actually seriously see some of their staff members saying that. Two specifically. So what gets reported is up to each individual player and their each specific victim complex, but we recommend always reporting any behavior that could be harassment or threatening behavior as soon as it happens. It, it could be. It's probably not, but it could be, and they're encouraging you to do it, which is suspicious because they actually would want to lower the workload and not have false reports, but I think we all know what they really want you to do. You know, it, it, it could be threatening behavior, you know, wink, nod, mm -mm, you know, conservative viewpoints. Anything anti-left at all that you can take as a threat, even though it's not meant as a threat. We want to be proactive in dealing with disruptive players. That's right, disruptive. Not not offensive, not rule-breaking, not law-breaking, not and no, just disruptive. Not even offensive, just disruptive. Everyone not agreeing with little crazy leftyville is disruptive, by the way, to them. And we need timely and accurate reports to make this happen. No, you don't. You can report something that happened last week and it'll have the same effect. I, I don't get why it needs to be timely. Just because you're pissed off that these people are a part of your community and you want them gone? Is that why? How to report conduct. Oh, God, I'm curious. Okay, here we go. There are three ways to report conduct violations. Well, that's not confusing. Let me append this. Let, let me fix this statement. There are three completely different ways to report conduct violations. Which one you should use, who the hell knows. But what we aren't going to do is make one of them right-click on the person's name, hit report, and type Y. Because that's too easy. Uh, it says conduct report, block player, and chat with support. But those are drastically different. Like, wh which one is more likely to work? Which one would you prefer people use? Which one goes more directly to the correct staff? That's just bad design is what that is. Okay, online conduct report. The first way to report bad conduct file is filling out a magic online conduct reporting form, and they have a link to it. I'm not going to go on because I don't want to encourage anybody to actually do this. The funny thing is, <laughs> as you fill out the form, uh, it, to make it actionable, remotely actionable, as they put it, uh, you should include the following information. Your username, okay, duh. Opponent's user ID, which, by the way, is... Um, you know, it, you could get a spelling wrong, could be zero instead of one. You got to remember it perfectly. You got to have a screenshot. Even from a screenshot, you can't copy and paste. That's just stupid. Um, unless it's like a long string of numbers, because they said user ID, not user name. But even then, like, you're never going to remember a sequence of numbers, but at least you could screenshot it. And then the exact game ID. And in the example, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digits long. <laughs> so, woo, get that screenshot button out. You know, because everybody who plays MTGO is technically capable of taking and saving a screenshot, which, you know, honestly is not the easiest thing in the world on Windows. Like, it's not that hard, but you got to, like, paste it into paint, crop it, save it, name it, put it in a folder where you'll remember it later. So, okay, that'll never happen, nor is it remotely realistic. Um, let's see. Oh, and then they said, if the game is over and you no longer have the game window up, you can actually go to account and then game history and find the information. So, actually, okay, I guess you wouldn't have to necessarily screenshot it, but... Uh, You'd have to remember which game, and you'd have to remember really damn well which game. I mean, they it looks like they have a replay button where you could rewatch the entire game or something. That's actually kind of neat. I'm surprised they implemented that. And not a right-click and report player button. But boy, I tell you, if you report the wrong person in the wrong game, wouldn't that suck? Uh, then it's like if the conduct issue didn't happen in a game. How would that... Is there like a global chat? Like, what, what are they even talking about? Oh, they harassed me on Facebook. Ban their MTGO account. Which they've already announced they would do. They said they have a social media investigator. So, and they, they made a clear statement saying that anything you say in or out of the game could be used to ban you in this. Which is like, also Blizzard made that statement too. That's why people are twice as pissed. I think it was Blizzard. It actually might have been somebody else. I don't know. Whatever. Now, the other way, and this is interesting, is you just hit block player. Uh, it says when you're in the client, you can block disruptive or toxic players. Uh, a blocked player cannot join your open play games, which, by the way, is what the ignore button does on Xmage, which you should be using instead. Uh, initiate a chat with you or start a game or start or join uh, one of your trades. And also you don't see their chat. So, to oh my God, this is literally what they said they don't have as a feature. 
To block a player, right-click their name in chat uh, or from the chat participants menu and select block. Uh, and then you can also select a reason. This is literally how you report somebody. You right-click and report. Out. How are they saying that they don't have this feature? This is that feature. Oh my God, they don't even know how their own damn software product works. This is just sad. Oh my God, I cannot believe this. I am legitimately shocked. They put player blocked, will be blocked because, and then the drop down for the reason. I'm going to read these and you guys are going to think I'm just kidding. Number one, deck choice. Holy shit. You can block somebody because you don't like the fact that they're running some toxic turn 40 bullshit control deck. And if they get too many reports, they might actually get a suspension due to deck choice. I mean, they didn't say they would. They didn't say they wouldn't. I'm going to say they will. <laughs> Harassment. Okay, so in other words, having a conservative viewpoint and saying something that triggers you if you're a snowflake. Uh, spam, which, duh, I mean, they're just typing some bullshit in some kind of chat. Slow play. Oh, hallelujah. Get those people out of here. Bad trader. I don't know, some kind of dishonest trade or something lying about a value. That, I don't know. That's on you. I mean, you're literally sitting at a computer. Just look up the fucking card price. And then other, please specify. Oh, uh, they triggered me. I don't like that they said they're a white male. Ban them. Also, notify the FBI that they're a white male. I don't feel comfortable. Get them out of my country. Oh, okay, so they went through this whole thing. Here's how you do it. Here's blah, blah, blah. The what you should write, what details to include. And then they undercut it. While blocking a player is a great way to prevent yourself from interacting with toxic players, it is not a replacement for an online conduct report. <laughs> so in other words, they might not even look at these. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Online conduct reports are direct and reviewed as they come in. In other words, queued up and held for a week. Uh, while blocked players are reviewed periodically and may not result in immediate action. So in other words, like 100 people would have to block the person and they'll be like, hey, let's just look at the top 100 most blocked people and just see what they're doing. See, let's just read some of the reasons. So if only five people report them, it won't even be on their radar. They'll never check the person out. So whereas every single conduct report will be checked out, allegedly. They never said they don't expire if the queue gets too big. Let me just throw that out there. I know how support tickets work. So blah, blah, blah. You can give more details. Blah, 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 blah. Use already little tricky SJW words, exaggerate everything and rig it so that they get kicked off. Yep. Same, same as uh, mass flagging on YouTube and mass flagging on Patreon. A third option is chat with support. Th this is just stupid. I wouldn't do it. There, I summarized it. Like, why chat with support when the first thing they're going to do is probably just, like, fill out a conduct report for you. Like, this is just stupid. And the ending says, keep it classy. God, th didn't that meme die in like 2009? Anyway, uh, we want you to have the best time possible when you're playing Magic Online. <laughs> I'm not even touching that. I can make about 100 jokes. So I'm just not going to make any. Use your imagination. But we need your help. Please report violations, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we need your help. All these little, these subtle little phrases. We need your help. Oh, disruptive. Um, community members. Unwanted. You know, it's basically just, we want to get the conservative people and people who are anti-trans, anti-gay, anti-anything, anti-neo-feminism. They want them out of the game. That's what this is. They're just letting everybody know that you will be banned for a first offense if they personally think that it's something that's ban worthy and the only people that they employ, as far as I've heard, is really left-leaning people. So what do you think is the natural result of that? I mean, you could say I'm exaggerating this. We'll see the results, and I can't wait to see the resulting lawsuits. Because, and I cannot stress this enough, I'm pretty sure you'd win in court if you try to sue saying that you own those cards. You know why? Because you own those cards. Doesn't really fucking matter what the terms of use say, and the terms of use were contradicted when Wizards compensated that one person a couple years ago after they were banned. Because that's an admission on their part that they owed them money. I'm sure they made them sign something that just says, this is just a gift, it has nothing to do with compensation, this is not an acknowledgement that we owe you anything, blah 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 blah, but that only applies to that one person, doesn't it? So anyway, um, the, the real takeaway from this is don't play MTGO, don't give them any money, don't spend money on it. I'd be careful around Arena as well. They can ban you at any time and you can lose everything just like pretty much every MMO run by nutcases ever. You know why I sold 10 million uh, gold on my RuneScape account like 15 years ago? Because my account was worth roughly $1,500 US, and I thought, you know what, I mean, people are being dicks, and I'm not one to just ignore them or block them. I'm one to check them, okay? I'm one to fight in the chat over some petty bullshit. Because if somebody's acting like a dick and nobody steps up and checks them because they're so scared of, you know, both of you getting reported, then just, those are pansy-ass bitches, and they don't fix anything in the community of the game. It's just like, I own my shop, and if somebody comes in and they're being a dick, I will kick them out. I've kicked out about 10 people for uh, disruptive behavior, <laughs> terms of use violation from my shop. Shop, and they were shocked 
They're just like, oh, I've never had this happen. I'm like, really? Because Walmart kicks people out all the time, actually. But uh, yeah, fuck you. I mean, you're not used to people checking you on your on your shitty behavior and acting like an asshole. Like just out of nowhere, and the person's insulting me, insulting how long I took for a certain job, insulting my prices. I'm just like, you know what? I don't appreciate your behavior. Get out here and don't come back. You're not welcome in the store. They look like they're going to have a heart attack because they just came from the grocery store complaining about how the coupon was misleading and everybody's terrible and the, the oh, the they didn't like the way the cashier looked at them and just, uh, you know, they just go around bitching at everybody and everybody just plays along with it. I uh, got news for you. As far as I go, homie don't play that. In case you're not as old as me, that's an in-loving color reference. So yeah, I'll get into it. And if they decide that after, uh, God, probably the fifth ban, the fifth temporary ban in RuneScape, that they were going to ban my account for good, I'd be out a lot of money because eventually I was going to quit the game and cash out all my shit that I got. Yeah, you know, all that property that I don't own, although I didn't pay cash for it, I got it through natural in-game stuff. It resides exclusively on the server and they made it very clear that it's not allowed in any way, shape, or form to sell it outside the game or trade it or anything. So that might not have stood up in court, but MTGO is completely different. There's clear reported agreed upon cash values. There's trade bots that'll pay you with PayPal and you own those cards, okay? So yeah, if you've got hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars sitting in MTGO, I think now's the time to get out of it. I think this announcement is the big red flag that says, if we decide you're an unwanted member of the community, you're disruptive and we don't want you here, instant first offense, zero tolerance, permanent ban. That is what they just said that they're going to be uh, uh, handing out. So don't slip up and say the wrong thing because Big Brother's watching and you'll be out a fuck ton of money. Oh, so my goal in sharing this wonderful uh, interpretation of their article with you is that we make the cards and the player base crash on MTGO even harder than when they changed it over to Treasure Chess. Because word is they lost mm, 30 to 50% of their player base. I mean, they'll never release the numbers, but just looking at how many people would have to leave to cause the cards to crash that hard... It's a lot of sell-offs. So this is your last and final warning to get the hell off the Titanic before they sink it. If you don't, and a couple months down the road, you say something they don't agree with, then boom, all your cards are gone, and now you gotta take it to court and spend five grand on a lawyer, that's your own damn fault. But like I said, if that does happen, let me know. I mean, but this is your warning ahead of time. Get the hell off this ship. Oh, and X-Mage, if you want to clean up the servers, make me a moderator. I'll get rid of the toxic players in 24 hours. 100% accuracy, guaranteed. I'll see you guys next video.